The Senator from California. I would ask that the quorum call be dispensed with. Without objection. Mr. President, I would ask unanimous consent that I be recognized for up to eight minutes, followed by Senator Baldwin. Without objection. Mr. President, I rise today to urge my colleagues to vote for ENDA, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. This bill is about basic fairness, and it's really about the golden rule, treating others as you would like to be treated. Every single American should have the right to earn a living and provide for his or her family without fearing discrimination in the workplace because of who they are and whom they love. Americans like Marty Edwards, an assistant vice president of the First National Bank of Granbury, Texas, whose story was recently featured in The Advocate. Marty was passed over for promotions at work, despite a very strong 11-year history at the bank. When he asked for an explanation from his vice president and human relations department, he was told that the workers who had received the promotion were, quote, a better fit for the image we are looking for, unquote. Now, Marty Edwards had been hired by the bank right out of college. He formed his professional identity there. He was moving up the ladder until he came out as a gay man. When Edwards asked whether his sexual orientation was the main reason he'd been denied promotions, the bank executive vice president demanded his resignation. Edwards refused, and then he was fired. Now, Marty Edwards' story is sadly not unique. Between 15 and 43% of LGBT people have experienced discrimination in the workplace or harassment in the workplace as a result of their sexual orientation. 26% of transgender people report having been fired from their job because of their gender identity. And 90% report experiencing harassment, mistreatment, or discrimination. Mr. President, our fellow citizens need ENDA. I was here when ENDA was voted on so many years ago when it was a Ted Kennedy bill. And we didn't make it then. But I think we're going to make it now. Because Americans know that ENDA is the right thing to do. As a matter of fact, 80% of Americans assume there already is a law prohibiting discrimination against this community. But more than half of Americans still live in states where it's perfectly legal to fire a lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender American just because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. So that's why we need this bill. There are many states where there's no protections. And this bill would make sure the protections are nationwide. 70% of the American public supports ENDA. According to the Washington Post, public support ranges from a high of 81% in Massachusetts to a low of 63% in Mississippi. So it's clear that this support cuts across party affiliation and gender uh, generational gaps. Whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, an Independent, whether you're a Libertarian, whether you're young or old, Americans overwhelmingly support this bill. The American people are basically giving us a message. This is a no-brainer. We shouldn't have to fight about it. We should just vote for it. That's why I was just so dismayed to read that House Speaker Boehner said that he would not support ENDA, and his reason was it will increase litigation. Now, does the speaker really think that LGBT Americans who have families to support and bills to pay would rather pursue frivolous lawsuits than earn their pay in a workplace free of har harassment and discrimination? And here's what's really, I think, disingenuous about that. Republicans do not suggest that all the other groups covered by the Civil Rights Act are filing frivolous lawsuits. In other words, all the rest of Americans who are protected because of their religion, because of their color, because of their creed. Speaker Boehner says they're not filing frivolous lawsuits, and he doesn't want to repeal the civil rights law for those people. Good. But then why does he think that the LGBT community is going to file frivolous lawsuits? I have to say, evidence shows that what he's saying is false. The speaker ignores the fact that the Government Accountability Office issued a recent report 
showing that in the 22 states that ban sexual orientation discrimination in the workplace, quote, there were relatively few employment discrimination complaints based on sexual orientation and gender identity filed, unquote. So in other words, there is not a problem with frivolous lawsuits being filed by the LGBT community in the states that have protective laws. That's because LGBT Americans are woven into the fabric of our workplaces, our communities, and every other facet of our American life. So this bill is about granting them the just and fair protections they deserve so that they can live their lives and contribute to our economy without fear of losing their jobs because of who they are or whom they love. It's the moral thing to do, and it makes good business sense. A majority of Fortune 500 companies have sexual orientation and gender identity non-discrimination non policies in place. And recent polling shows us that a majority of small businesses do too. So I have to say, um, in the states where we have these laws, people are happy with it. People are so happy with it that they think the whole country already passed a law. And so how could the speaker get up and now say he's opposed to it, and it's because that they'll, they'll be filing a frivolous lawsuit. He, it's a made-up straw man, if I might say. The state of California and many of our cities enforce these policies well, and the economy benefits. As Apple CEO Tim Cook wrote in the Wall Street Journal, quote, those who have suffered discrimination have paid the greatest price for this lack of legal protection. But ultimately, we all pay the price. If our coworkers can't be themselves in the workplace, they certainly cannot be their best selves. When that happens, we undermine people's potential. We deny ourselves and our society the full benefits of those individual talents. And I want to thank Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, for those progressive thoughts. Employers know that they will be the most competitive when they hire and retain the best people. And folks will apply for and strive to keep their jobs if they know that a company only considers their qualifications for the job and the results of their hard work. Nothing more, nothing less. And I believe my colleagues will do the right thing and pass this bill. I want to say to my colleague, Jeff Merkley, he's not on the floor right now, he has really pushed hard for this vote. And I want to thank Senator Harry Reid, our leader. There are many other bills that compete for attention, and I think it was very important. Because what could be more important than protecting our people, protecting our sons and daughters, protecting all God's children? And that's what ENDA does. So I think we're going to see a very good vote on this bill tomorrow, uh, but really, it ought to pass by 80, 90, 100 votes, because it's a very simple idea. Everyone should be treated fairly. Everyone should be treated equally. And this nation is at its best when we do that. I thank you very much. I yield the floor.